Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow Industrials uh, down 112. Nasdaq is up six. S&P is a flat. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. Don't forget, folks, uh, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, the way you get this newsletter, you come over to our website at TFNN. And as you come over there, you're going to see right under Featured Content, I'm man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, Mastering Probability. And Steve is the number one market timer of the year in the S18, uh, you hit Mastering Probability, you hit Subscribe, you can get it for one month for $149, six months for $695, which is a savings of $199, a year for $1195, which is a savings of $593. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And folks, when you get Steve's newsletter, you're going to see there's a bunch of archives that he has in there, a bunch of other great educational tools that you're going to get. ASAP. So check it out right in the front page of TFNN. Steve Rhodes, what's going on, brother? Well, it's Masters Week, my yeah. favorite, uh, my favorite golf tournament of the year. Yeah, and, uh, so. I know. It's 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 always, you know, I guess it's it's always great, and then you know that okay, it's also the end of the season too, right? Well, no, 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 really kind of. So the second major for uh, what's kind of cool oh, about the not, PGA. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah. so with the PGA Tour, they moved the uh, they moved the Players Championship back to its original when they originally had it uh, slotted for in March. So now we've got in essence a major in March, April, May, June and July. Oh, wow. And July will end up being the PGA Championship. Well, so it's close then. So but, it's the beginning of the season really. Yeah, yeah kind of really okay, a couple weeks right, ago when right. we did the uh, when they were cut, touring through Florida, uh, the TPC was the week before right. uh, they came over to your side of the uh, woods over there. So, uh, what was really cool this this year is that they had uh, the women's amateur. They had a women's amateur tournament. Uh, it was a three day tournament. Two days were played off site, and then on Saturday, uh, they had the women play the last round there. And they're mostly college. Uh, girls, but not everybody. Just had to be an amateur. Uh, but it was the Tom, the, the the two top women. It was the most amazing golf. I was supposed to play. I did play golf with with some buddies of mine. But when they called, said, "Hey, you, you know, you ready to go?" I said, "Are you watching this tournament?" Yeah, I saw you said it in the den. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And they like. No, what what tournament? I said, you got to turn this on and watch it. And, you know, I've got two daughters, two granddaughters, so it's kind of a really cool thing to – and these two – one of the best, most competitive rounds of golf. Um, and what was so cool is that they, the, the two women playing each other were friends. They're walking down their fairway. They're laughing. They're having a good time. Wow. Um, yeah, it was pretty. It was. There's uh, the the woman who won. There's not a pro out there that wouldn't like to have her back nine. Um, so you know. So I'm looking forward pretty to cool. this week. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you were talking about this is not what I was going to talk about, but I just happened to have it up on my screen. And and you're the king. We call you the king. And uh, you love king dollar out there. And so I put this chart up here, which is the U.S. dollar index. Um, it goes back quite a ways, but the lines on this we talked about this last week. Uh, these show the horizontal trading ranges. Now, this is a monthly time frame yeah. that I'm showing on my screen, but the blue represents the daily horizontal trading ranges. And for folks that are new to that, this takes a look at uh, data um, going back as far as you want. In this case here, I think it'll go back into the uh, early 90s. And it looks for opens and closes of a bar, and it identifies the largest number of opens and closes at one price level, then figures out the second most popular area, and then it takes those distances and just adds horizontal levels to the uh, to the upside and to the downside. What's kind of interesting here is that for the last 10 days, the, now I don't need to tell you this, you already knew this, but gold's been kind of move, moving side, not gold, uh, the U.S. dollar index been moving sideways. But it's interesting here, Tom, It's uh, there's been 109 closes at or near the 94.75 level okay. over this time period. And that's that blue line. Right now, that's a support area. And the U.S. dollar index keeps bumping into this resistance, which is 96.94. There have been 21 monthly closes. So the red lines are monthly, the green are weekly, the blue lines represent the uh, daily. And they're going to be different because of, of you know, uh, not every week ends when every month does. So sure. it's, it's always going to be slightly different here. So if the U.S. dollar index can take out with some conviction this 96, 95 level, 102 is is game on for there. And if price breaks below 94, 75, with some type of conviction, I'll say a little bit, not not by a penny or two, but, you know, uh, a dime. 
sure. something like that. Uh, then then we're looking at you know eighty potentially eighty eight to eighty seven bucks. So anyways, I just thought I would throw that out there. But speaking of golf, um, you know the market is nothing but from my standpoint, it's nothing more than emotion. You know, it, here this happens to be pictures of some golfers, um, and in the lower le- and and golfers we all show our emotion or sometimes we internalize it. Uh, but it's really all about being able to and, you, and whenever you watch a sporting event, hey, tomorrow we've got the final game, D- Texas Tech and uh, yeah. I, I got to forget who they're playing. It's neither Virginia. of my team. Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, but you know, you could take a look at the emotion just tells you everything. You don't need to have words. You can see Ian, Ian Poulter, clearly missed a putt. He's, he's, you know, he's biting on his uh, putter. We've all probably felt like that. And you got Phil, you know, making a great putt. And then, of course, you get, in this case here, this looks like a British Open. I, I'm not sure where I grabbed that picture from of Tiger. But clearly he's saying to himself, why did I hit that shot? Yeah. Um, but the market is full of emotion as well. And I created a tool years ago that helps us measure the market's emotion. And it's called the RMI3, the Roads Momentum 3 indicator. Um, and it, what it does, Tom, it measures the EKG, the electrocardiogram for the market. And, and, and if you've ever taken an EKG, you know, a normal EKG goes from an upper threshold level, I'll call, to a lower threshold lever level. And if you, you know, if you're just kind of arresting, it's, it's, it should be pretty normal. That's what a normal EKG looks like. Uh, the market, and I can use this tool, I can measure its EKG too. This happens to be one for a time period of the Dow going between an upper threshold level that I've got this blue horizontal line and a blue horizontal line at the bottom between 80 and 20. It, it, it's not important with regard to what that's measuring. Just this tool measures the EKG of the market. And if I take that same tool and I just simply show the chart data, my tool displays these red and green boxes there. The red ones represent these uh, that the that the motion of the market keeps hitting this upper threshold, kind of like a, a runner, a sprint printer. Um, and instead of having a 100-yard dash or 200 or what have you, this just tells you how much energy, and energy and emotion, from, from my standpoint, the same thing, how much energy is in the market out here. So if we fast forward to today in the Dow, and this was a snapshot from maybe about 30 minutes ago, if you see all these, so this comes back to the December lows out here, and you see all these red boxes. We had one little retracement here in March, creates this little, so that's, the green box is a lower threshold level. And um, and really, those become potentially buying opportunities when price closes above the high of that uh, green box out there. So we a strong run, Finally, that was, in essence, that was your rest. So here's the runners, the emotion of the market. They take a little bit of a rest. And right now, because last Friday, we created another one of those red boxes. Still strong, powerful uptrend out there. Now, as you know, as we know, Boeing represents 10% of the Dow out here. So we really need to watch what I'll call the seller momentum inside of this stock, because it could have real impact inside of the Dow. So this is about measuring the uh, momentum of the uh, market. I'll do a workshop for subscribers, you know, in the next month or so out there. But uh, it's Masters Week and my favorite week. got to love it. And listen, folks, the way you get Steve's newsletter, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right into featured content, Master and Probability. Hit that button. Steve, you have a great night, safe night. Of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.